Greetings, gorgeous. Welcome to Simply Sango. If this is your first time here, Hajime Mashite. My name is Sango, a Japanese Jamaican living here in Japan, trying to live a fulfilling life while documenting it as much as possible. And if this isn't your first time here, welcome back, Wagwan. Bless up yourself. Thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate you. In today's video, I'll be reflecting on my singing experiences throughout my life. I know that's a big topic, but hear me out okay and also i speak about my recent open mic experience my first time participating in one and also a possible quarter life crisis that i may or may not be going through so i'll be unloading a lot if you're not in the right mental space to be listening to somebody rant right now i suggest you circle back another day when you're in a better mood i'm sorry i know that's a very bad introduction and you may or may not want to watch this video anymore but I'll be doing a fun makeup while I'm doing it, you know, so I don't know. Enjoy. <laughs> the clouds are on a roll today. We're just going to roll with it. We're going to roll with the clouds, okay? Because the clouds just going in and out and the lighting is just kind of annoying, but I can't really control it. Like so many things I can't control in my life right now. <laughs> if you follow me over on my Instagram, you might have seen that I had my first ever open mic experience and it was amazing. So I thought I'd hop on here and talk to you guys about that, including a couple of things that's been going on in my nugget. Bailey Syrian style. Everything I used on my face will be listed down in the description box. So let's get to it. I think that I'm going through a quarter life crisis. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be talking about my open mic situation, but um, before that, I wanted to kind of like fill you in on the reason why I even bothered going to an open mic. I've always wanted to participate in an open mic in Tokyo, but I never really knew where to go. I've had lists of places that does open mic, but they were all pops and you know, J-pop. They didn't really do the genre that I like. And I just felt like even if I do go and sing, it wouldn't be my crowd, you know? But yesterday I finally had the it wasn't motivation, it wasn't courage, it wasn't it wasn't anything related to positive energy. It was just that I got so fed up and frustrated about the situation that I'm in. I've already been going through a little bit of sad moment because I'm having a withdrawal. Like I spent every single day um, last month with my boyfriend and now I'm back home in my apartment by myself. So it's kind of like readjusting myself into the environment. That's one factor. The second factor is that, you know, it's New Year's. New Year's time, you know, you reevaluate your life, you set new goals and look forward to the new year. Instead of getting motivated, I got demotivated. <laughs> So basically, I tried making a mood board and I tried thinking of all the things that I want to do this year, all the things that I want to accomplish this year. And in order to, you know, make it tangible and make it into a more realistic plan, I started mapping out all the money that it's going to cost to do all those things that I want to do. And then I started going down into a sad rabbit hole, spiraling about what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. I'm turning 27 this year, and I know I'm not supposed to feel this way, but I just can't help but think, am I on the right path? Um, will I achieve what I want to achieve? Doing the things I'm doing right now, will I be able to achieve all the things that I want to achieve? You know, I started mapping out my whole freaking life instead of just looking at 2022. Rightfully so, my little precious brain went into a downward spiral. And that's when I started to look for fun things to do. Um, I really love singing. Um, singing for me is a very safe and comforting thing to do. Um, not necessarily in front of people, as you may know by now that whenever I sing, I'm usually singing like 30 seconds clip on Instagram story and nothing to open unless it's like Christmas time because I'm really, I really like singing Christmas songs. And I needed something very um, stimulating to experience in order to kind of blow away the feeling that I've been having. Now, if it's something that I could, you know, control a little bit better, I would not, you know, go into a neglective mood. But the thing is, the situation I'm in, it can't be rushed. It's honestly going to take a couple of years. It just doesn't make sense that I'm freaking out about it at the moment. 
so I just needed to step out of that mood for a while because I was going deep down into the rabbit hole. It got bad to a point that every time Genoa called, I was crying. I just didn't like that. I mean, it's good to cry. It's a good thing to let your emotions out and acknowledge them and stuff. But I've been doing that for the last couple of days and um, it's not that I'm rushing it, but I'm kind of getting tired of it. You can say that I felt stuck. I felt a little bit lost and, you know, kind of scared of my future in a way. So the thing is I just really needed to get out of that headspace even for one second. So what I did was I turned to my safe space, which is singing. But I can't really sing in this apartment because, you know, obviously I have neighbors. It's a small apartment. Um, the walls are concrete, yes, and it can barely hear my neighbor, but I don't want to trigger anything. I don't want to cause friction. So rewind to last week, I was looking into open mic locations in Tokyo. There were a lot, to be honest, but most of the places that I was looking into didn't have the genre that I liked. It just wasn't the type of thing that I was looking for. I was looking for something more like a jazz bar. It's not Brooklyn, it's not New Orleans, it's not New York. So I kind of gave up on looking for the type of open mic spots that I wanted to perform at. I found this one location. Keywords were blues, souls, R&B, jazz, and that kind of thing. I'm like, oh my god, the genre is spot on, but I didn't know what the atmosphere was like. I went to their website and their website was kind of like, you know, I had that location in my mind because it's very close to where I am. And they do open mics once a month. Unfortunately, they hadn't done their open mic for January as yet. So I decided that I'll go to the open mic to look. I went there, it was a very nice atmosphere. They were already playing music, somebody was already singing. But yeah, very nice vibes, very nice atmosphere. I walked in, it was about 10 to 15 people there. I was kind of a little younger than the usual age group that's at the location. Like many bar and many live houses in Tokyo or Japan in general, you have to like order a drink. So I put my coat down, ordered a glass of wine, sat down and watched everyone perform. At the beginning, the owner of the store was like, put your name here. And I was like, oh no, I'm not performing. But they were like, yeah, just put your name there just in case and write that you're just watching. So that's what I did. Put my name down. I sat down and watched everyone perform. It was such a nice atmosphere. I could tell that everybody inside of that bar knew each other. And that's what I really liked about it. It had a very homey, cozy atmosphere. nothing felt forced which i really love so i'm there watching everybody perform it was around 8 p.m that the host announced on the mic that the last order for drinks is 8 p.m there's this very sweet guy um he's in his 60s and he was like oh my god i have to order my cola and everybody's like just playing with him was like cola isn't alcohol you don't have to like there's no time limit for that but everybody else who drinks went and ordered their beer their whiskey and while i was ordering my second glass of wine and somebody tapped me on my shoulder and i was like oh boy here we go i was freaking out inside very introverted in social settings like this i like to stay in my corner but then there was this one guy at the bar it wasn't flirty or anything most of these people are in their 50s and 60s who already have their family and they're just doing music as a hobby and something that they enjoy and the guy was like what do you do <laughs> it was so weird because there wasn't any tatemai there was none of that and i think he asked that thinking i play an instrument but unfortunately i don't play any instrument at all i told him um i have instrumentals for these two songs and they were like what are you doing come on let's sing and i was like okay i mean i was already a glass of wine in so that shyness had already kind of peeled a couple of layers off and then they were like okay you're gonna sing today give me the instrumentals that you have and let's get you ready it was very welcoming i feel like the most encouraging part of it was knowing that everybody there was interested in the genre and or interested in a similar genre that i liked and that i'm very comfortable or that i feel at home listening to and singing and I feel like that, I've never felt that anywhere. It's not that I have a long musical history, but my dad's a musician. He's a drummer, he's a singer, he's, he DJs. I grew up around that. I've seen secondhand 
what dedication it requires. But that didn't really stop me when I was young. So fast forward to high school in Japan, I went to a very English speaking friendly high school. It wasn't necessarily an international school. Not many people there spoke English, but the people there really wanted to learn English. I felt, you know, at home and I really wanted to get into get back into a hobby. And I really wanted to sing because I felt like in junior high school I wasn't really able to dive into things that I really liked because I was shy and I was just scared of judgment. But I felt at that high school that I wouldn't be judged. So I joined the Keiongakubu. It's like a band club where there are multiple music bands. And I'm not talking like jazz bands or anything. It's basically rock music. There's like multiple rock bands and we perform and we show each other a performance and stuff like that. So yeah, I was in this rock band for three straight years. Um, we made covers of Avril Lavigne, but mostly Avril Lavigne because the only English rock band or rock singer, rock pop singer that had music sheets in the store was Avril Lavigne. And I was comfortable singing in English. I've tried singing in Japanese a couple of times with them, but they were like, no, you're singing English girl. I feel like that's when I fell in love with live music or singing with a band. Okay, so fast forward to university, there was this event that a couple of seniors were doing for new grads, new entries, I guess. So I went there to kind of like, I feel like I was trying to reinvent myself because even back then I was still socially awkward and I didn't like feeding into that narrative. And there was a music label and they were basically scouting young students to consider training to become an actual artist. We had a couple of interviews. I've already told them that I was in a band when I was in high school. And they were like, oh, so you sing. I think that was very convenient for them. Um, at first it was fun, of course, because they made me choose the songs that I wanted to sing or practice with. But eventually they were like, um, how do you, what do you think about singing Japanese songs? practicing songs that I don't even like, learning the lyrics, it just became very daunting. I wasn't even in my 20s yet. I was like 18, 19. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yes, at that time I was working part-time, but obviously because we're all paying, we're all putting our coins together to pay for my university, it became very daunting to ask my parents for money to go to the to the vocal training that I'm kind of like half-assing at the point. The label started to notice that I'm getting demotivated and they decided not to renew the contract. Obviously now as a grown-up, I'm like, yeah, serve you right. <laughs> Don't waste these people's time. But going through all that experience, I went through this period of time where I was like, I don't want to sing for work anymore. I don't want to sing. I don't want to participate in creating this persona that I absolutely am not. Now I know the type of music and the type of songs that I like singing and I'm comfortable singing and I can sing good in, but back then I was so lost. I was like, oh my God, I'm a bad singer. I can't, I can't hit this note. I can't, you know, I'm singing up in my nose and I'm like, dude, there are a whole bunch of people who sing up in their nose and can sing good. I just didn't want music to be a space like that for me. I didn't want to turn my safe space into a business. I'm kind of having trouble wrapping this video up, but uh, I guess what I wanted to say is that uh, don't do things just because people are pressuring you to do it. And two, don't rush your life, I guess. Have the patience and we'll make it out eventually. This is a very famous saying by Thich Nhat Hanh, um, who recently passed away, which was very devastating and sad. But a very famous quote from him was, the suffer in you is big, but don't wait until that suffer is gone before you're able to feel happiness. And that's something I have to like remind myself every day. This year is going to be a lot of creative outlets and discipline. That's my two keywords for the year, discipline and creativity. Let me know what are your 
keywords for the rest of the year. Like, I'm not trying to overwhelm you. Don't overwhelm yourself while you're at it like somebody. But if you guys have any, like, you know, keywords that you thought of to push you through the rest of the year, let me know in the comments. I'm done blabbering. I'm gonna leave you guys to some clips that I took last night. Um, I didn't really talk about last night that much, but basically after I sang my songs, the other people got their second round and then at the end of it all they're like let's do one last session there are a couple of people who love reggae music and i was like i can sing a couple of bob marley song i know it's very cliche yeah i was like i can sing a couple of bob marley song and somebody said no woman no cry i was like oh really we're going there i thought it was going to be one love or something but somebody said no woman no cry i was like hell yeah everybody who could play an instrument was like okay how does it go how does it go and i popped up my spotify and i put my phone towards the mic and they listened to like two three lines and oh my god they started to orchestrate no woman no cry like right on the spot and i was so fascinated because they only listened to th two three lines and they were just playing it perfectly so i was like oh my god like while you guys are like setting up the songs and the keys and all that i'm gonna go set up my camera i set up my camera but after everything happened i noticed that my microphone wasn't on it was sad but the moment was so fun i'm so glad that i captured it at least visually and yeah, I had so much fun. Ah, all right. Um, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Saying go out. Oh wait, enjoy the clips. Okay, I don't think I'll post a full thing. If I don't post a full thing, I'm sorry. It's probably copyrighted. It is what it is. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.